here we are again, you guys, with a story time! Scribble, scribble, story time! Uh, so I did a scary story time one Wednesday, and a lot of people seemed to like it, so I figured I would do another one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it pretty much the same way I did it last time. I'm gonna tell you a scary story from my life, and then we're gonna move on to another scary story that I find online. So, here we go! Now, if you watched my last video, I spoke of living in an apartment where the weirdest shit happened to me. If you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and leave a little annotation to it in case you do want to see it. Now, this happened in the same exact apartment from that last story. Like I said, a lot of crazy shit happened in that apartment, not even just to me. So, a lot of the times when I was younger and we lived in this apartment, now mind you, before we moved into this apartment, I never ever had this dream, ever. But when we moved into this apartment, I started having a reoccurring dream. Now that's not uncommon, and it's not something that, you know, it's something that other people go through. It's not something that's weird. But the weird thing was, in this reoccurring dream, I would fall asleep. And in the dream, I was aware of my surroundings. I was aware of the people that were around me. I could hear them speaking. I, I knew they were there. I could, you know, I was aware of everyone's existence and everything that was around me. I could hear them, you know, all that, but I could not move. I could not open my eyes. I could not break free. And uh, I know what a lot of you are thinking, that's simple. It's sleep paralysis. And, you know, I thought that too for a long time. I really did. I really thought I was just having weird sleep paralysis dreams that were just reoccurring. Now in this dream, even though I can hear everyone around me and I can, you know, hear that they're there, I can't wake up, I can't open my eyes, I can't fight against it. In this dream, I would slowly be dragged from wherever I was laying towards the closet in my bedroom. Now I, for some reason, I don't know how I knew or why I knew, for some reason I always knew I was being dragged towards my closet. There was never any indication as to that being the case, but for some reason I knew that's where I was going. And whenever I was finally able to snap free from this, whatever you want to call it, paralysis dream, whatever, I would always notice that I had moved slightly. Now that's not anything extraordinary. Obviously the answer with that to that would be, you know, in my sleep I rolled over or I scooted over. And you know, that's what I thought too. It's honestly, it's honestly what I thought too. That is, until one day, I was in my bedroom, and I don't know why I had decided to, but I had decided to lay on the floor, I think because my friend was visiting or something, and she was in the bed, and I wanted to give her the bed, so I laid on the floor, right in front of the closet. Now, once again, I had this reoccurring dream. I closed my eyes, I went to sleep, and it happened again. I was aware of my surroundings, but I couldn't move, and I couldn't open my eyes, and I couldn't scream, I couldn't do anything, and I could feel myself being pulled towards the closet once again. Now, this time, however, when I woke up from my sleep, I had found myself moved, once again, not extraordinary, but the weirdest part was I found my closet door wide open and me nearly inside of it. Now, I specifically recall having my closet door closed when I went to sleep because, you know, that dream always freaked me out and I always made sure it was closed whenever I went to sleep. So when I woke up this time and I saw that the closet door was open, you can imagine how freaked out I was. And I realized that it wasn't just some dream, that it was something else entirely. Now, when we left that apartment, I stopped having those dreams. And so I still truly believe that those dreams were not just dreams and they were not just some sleep paralysis thing because they only occurred when I, when I was in that apartment and when I was when I left they never happened again and when I had woke up to see that that closet door was open I realized that it had to be something else entirely. So that's my scary story from my life once again from that hell spawn of an apartment. We are now going to move on to another story that I found on Reddit. I think it's a very interesting looking story, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah. 
Even if I wanted your help, you couldn't give it to me, because your help is useless. Why? Because you're not a member. I just wish that I wasn't either. It all started innocently enough, with a phone call. I'd been up for a few hours, unpacking and cleaning, waiting for the plumber to call. I just moved into a cabin and the contractors fucked everything up. Because of that, I now had the wonderful task of making calls to the competent people that could fix what the original contractors did wrong. The phone rang at 12.06. Not bad, I thought. Usually plumbers don't bother to call or show up until 5. When I picked up the phone, I didn't even get a chance to say hello before a woman on the line told me Please hold for the next available operator. I hopped up and sat on the cabinet in the kitchen. It was one of the few places in the cabin not occupied with boxes. Elevator music leaked into my ear. I started to drowse off when the music stopped. And a piano chord that sounded like it was three notes that didn't quite go together played through the receiver twice. A voice came on the line. Welcome to Booth World Industries. My name is Samantha and I'll be your operator today. Name? I didn't know what to say, so I told the operator my name. Sir, we know who you are. I'm your operator. Please give me a name to access. I don't understand, I said. It can be anyone, sir. We just need a name. Uh, okay, I said. I made up a name. Harold Withers. Sir, as your operator, I must point out that fictitious names or the names of people that you don't know cannot be used. Used for what? I asked. How had she known that I'd made up that name? The whole thing felt like it was some sort of prank. But hardly anyone knew my new phone number. Remodeling. Remodeling? Is this the plumber? I asked. Welcome to Booth World Industries. My name is Samantha and I'll be your operator today. Name? I took that as a yes and gave them the name of an old ex-girlfriend. Jessica Goodwin. I could hear the clicking of a keyboard on the other end of the phone. It sounded like the woman was pounding the thing with her fists. After a few moments of this, she returned. Jessica Goodwin. She said. Remodeling is scheduled on August 21st, 2015. Would you like to reschedule? I was silent on my side of the phone. I couldn't believe this. Someone had to be playing a prank on me. Who is this? Is this you, Jessica? Are you playing a prank on me? I asked. The woman didn't respond for a long time. I thought that whoever was on the other end of the phone was holding in a laugh. Hello? I asked. Yes or no, sir? The woman asked back. Yes? I said, not understanding what the woman was asking. I have a Tuesday appointment available. Will that work? At that point, I thought I was going insane and that it actually was the plumbing company. Well, what about today? I asked. Do you have anything available for today? Normally, we can't arrange for a reschedule on such short notice, but today we had a cancellation. How does three o'clock work for you? Three o'clock is fine, I said. Three o'clock it is, then. Would you like a courtesy call? Sure. Wonderful. We at Booth World Industries say thanks and welcome to the club. You have a marvelous day. That strange chord played twice again, and the line went dead. I rolled my eyes and went back to unpacking. My phone rang at 3 o'clock on the dot that afternoon. Hello, I said. Sir, this is Samantha with Booth World Industries again. Your courtesy call begins now. What are you- I began to say, but was cut off by those diminished chords blaring in my ear. Then I heard Jessica's voice. Why- why are you doing this? Jessica asked. I could hear the tears in her voice. Jessica, I asked. Sir, the operator said. She cannot hear you. This is a courtesy call. The appointment has already concluded. Please. Jessica begged. Please, please don't do this. I'll, I'll do anything you want. I'll... Jessica's voice choked off into a wheeze. And all I could hear on the other end of the phone was the rustling of clothing and more wheezing. Eventually, it stopped. And someone picked up on the other end. Scheduled work has been completed, a man's voice said. We at Booth World Industries say thanks and welcome to the club. You have a marvelous day. Sir? The operator came back on the line. Was that to your satisfaction? I sat there for a long time, cold sweat dripping down my ribcage. Jessica was my ex, 
because I walked in on her and my best friend fucking at a party in high school. I smiled and whispered. That was perfect. Wonderful. The operator said. We at Booth World Industries aim to serve. Would you like to make another appointment? As I stared at the water leaking from the door of the dishwasher, I smiled even bigger. Yes, I said. Yes, I would. Name? Dan. I don't have a last name. He's a contractor. Dan Arankibia. July 13th, 2032. Would you like to reschedule? Yes, I said. How would Wednesday work for you? Didn't she say you had a Tuesday appointment available? I asked. I did, but unfortunately that slot has been filled by another member. Would Wednesday work for you? No, I said. I have a job interview that day. What about Thursday? Unfortunately, Thursday will not work. You are due for remodeling Wednesday night. What? I asked. She repeated the exact same thing to me again. Can we reschedule my remodeling? I asked. Of course I can, sir. The woman said. It sounded like she was smiling on the other end of the phone. There's always a way. I waited for her to tell me how. She didn't speak. How? I asked. Booth World Industries is always looking to add new members. We are, of course, a membership by invitation only club. Sadly, our membership numbers have fallen in recent years. Economic recessions, wars, politics. What we would like you to do in order to avoid your own remodeling appointment is help us add several new members. The light at the other end of the tunnel, I thought. How many members do you need? I asked. One thousand. I choked. <laughs> One thousand? Yes, sir. Otherwise, we'll have to keep our scheduled appointment. We must inform you that the member that scheduled this appointment did request a courtesy call. Everything stopped at that point for me. All my life I just skated by, not doing anything, not making a difference. My mouth actually dried up. I'd always thought that that was just a thing people wrote in books to be dramatic. It's not. I'll get you your 1,000 members, I whispered. We at Booth World Industries say thanks and welcome to the club. You have a marvelous day. The connection ended. I hung up the phone and stared at it for a long time. I'm scheduled for remodeling on Wednesday, and somewhere, someone will be getting a courtesy call to listen to my last few breaths if I don't get 1,000 members to join Booth World Industries. It's funny. I'd always wanted to join an elite club. Skull and Bones, New World Order. I'm not sure how I got in, but now I'm a member. I've got until Wednesday to enjoy it. Like I said at the beginning, even if I wanted your help, you couldn't give it to me because you're not a member. Membership is by invitation only. I am inviting you in. You can help me. Just call 630-296-7536.